So on the surface, conservation of momentum is a pretty simple, straightforward concept. The total momentum of all the objects in a system before a collision is equal to the total momentum of all of the objects after a collision. But as we have seen, uh, this can get kind of complicated really quickly. So we're going to go through a few problems and just kind of show uh, just some general uh, momentum problems and then some more complicated conservation momentum problems. So in this first one, we have a 325 kilogram motorcycle that is moving at 140 kilometers per hour south, and we want to find its momentum. So this is a pretty straightforward problem because we know that momentum is equal to the mass times the velocity. We were given the mass and we have the velocity, but one thing that we need to keep in mind is uh, velocity here is in kilometers per hour. And in order to put it into momentum, we need to change that into meters per second. Now, even on these simple problems, I always recommend that you draw out a, a, a sketch. So here's our motorcycle. We're going south at 140 kilometers per hour. Okay. And our mass is 325 kilograms. So we know those things from our problem. Now, in order to convert kilometers per hour to meters per second, we're going to have to do a little bit of conversion factors. So in one kilometer, kilo means a thousand, there are 1,000 meters. So our kilometers are going to cancel out. We'll be left with meters on the top. One hour has 3,600 seconds. So our hours will cancel out. So we're going to take this 140 times 1,000 and we're going to divide it by 3,600. So that gives us a velocity of 0 0.039 meters per second. So then now we can plug this in up here. We're going to take our mass times velocity. So momentum is going to be equal to 325 kilograms times 0 0.039 meters per second. That doesn't look right. Okay. 38. <laughs> 38, not... So 38.9 meters per second. I think that doesn't look really right. Okay, so 38.9. <coughs> so we're going to take that times 325. <coughs> so 325 times 38.9 and so our momentum is going to be 12,639 kilogram meters per second. Okay. So if we convert and punch into our calculator quickly, we should get um, 12,000 momentums. Okay. Now we can also go the other way with this. When we look at this next problem, we have a car that has a mass of 1,754 kilograms. And here we want to know at what velocity will it have the same momentum as our motorcycle. So our motorcycle had 12,639 momentums. Momentum is still equal to mass times velocity. But since we're finding velocity, we're going to move that over and take momentum divided by mass. So the momentum is 12,639, and we're going to divide by 1,754 kilograms. That's going to get rid of our kilograms, and we're left with meters per second. So we're going to take that divided by 1,754, and we're going to get 7.2 meters per second. So our car, since it has more mass, doesn't have to be going as fast in order to have the same momentum as a motorcycle because the motorcycle is so much smaller. Okay. All right, so those are pretty straightforward. So now we want to maybe add a little bit to that. So we have an astronaut in space and he's going to fire a thruster that expels 35 grams of hot gas at 875 meters per second. So what is the velocity of the astronaut after firing the shot? All right, so this problem is a little bit more complicated. 
Um, so we have an actual before and after situation. So again, we have momentum before is equal to momentum after. Okay, conservation of momentum. We know that the gas and the astronaut are together at the beginning and their total mass, the mass total is 84 kilograms. So the mass of our gas after it is expelled is going to be uh, 35 grams, which we want to convert that into kilograms by dividing by 1,000. So we have 0 0.035 kilograms. So the mass of our astronaut at the end is going to be 84 minus 0 0.035. So the mass of our astronaut is going to be 83.965 kilograms after. <clears throat> and then we also know the velocity, the final velocity of our gas is 875 meters per second. Now we're going to assume that our initial velocity of both of these are going, is going to be zero. So our initial velocity of our astronaut and the gas in our initial situation is going to be zero. So we actually have zero momentum. So zero momentum is going to be equal to the final momentum. So the final momentum is made up of the momentum of the gas and the momentum of the astronaut. So those two things added together will be equal to the final momentum. Now we also know that momentum is equal to mass times velocity. Um, since these two things added together are equal to zero, we can also write that as the final momentum of the gas is equal to the negative of the final momentum of our astronaut. So those two things are set equal to each other. So momentum of our gas is mass of our gas times the velocity of our gas equal to the negative of the mass of our astronaut times the velocity of our astronaut. And it's the velocity of the astronaut that we're looking for. So this is our unknown. So we could go ahead and just solve for that. So negative VA is going to be equal to mass of our gas, velocity of our gas, divided by the mass of the astronaut. So the mass of our gas was 0 0.035 kilograms, and the velocity was 875 meters per second. The mass of our astronaut is 83.965 kilograms. So we have 0 0.035 times 875 divided by 83.965. Oops. Okay. So what we get is a velocity of a negative 0 0.36 meters per second. And the negative is just telling us direction. So the gas is going this way, the astronaut's going this way, at a much smaller velocity because we have a much larger mass. So let's look at this next one. We have a 12,000 kilogram railroad car that is traveling at two meters per second and it strikes another 10,000 kilogram railroad car that is at rest. So our initial condition, so here's our car. Here's one of them, not moving. And this one is moving, say, this direction. And they are going to stick together. So after the collision, they are both stuck together and moving at some velocity, presumably this way. Um, typically, we can kind of predict where that velocity is going to be, but not always. So in our initial conditions, so this is our initial momentum, 
and this is our final momentum. In our initial conditions, we have the mass of railroad car one is 12,000 kilograms. The velocity of railroad car one is two meters per second. The mass of railroad car two is going to be 10,000 kilograms. And the velocity of railroad car two is going to be zero meters per second. Now in our final conditions, we don't know, since they're stuck together, they have some velocity that is the same. So if you have two things that are stuck together, they're gonna be moving at the same velocity. And the mass of both of them will be the 12,000 plus the 10,000, so 22,000 kilograms. Okay, now we're trying to find the final velocity. So what we have is we have initial momentum is equal to final momentum. The initial momentum is the momentum of one plus the momentum of two, and then the final momentum is both of them together, or the total, which I guess I wrote one, two over here, so let's just keep that consistent, okay? Now, velocity of two is zero because we have a zero meters per second. So the velocity of car two gives us a momentum of zero to begin with. So all of our momentum comes from this first car. So the mass of car one and the velocity of car one is going to be equal to the mass of both of them times the final velocity of both of them. So our velocity is going to be equal to the mass and velocity divided by the mass. So the mass of car one was 12,000 kilograms. The velocity of car one was two meters per second. And then divide by the total mass of both of them together after the collision. So we're gonna take 12,000 times two. We're gonna divide that by 22,000. So our final velocity of both of our cars is going to be 1.1 meters per second. And that makes sense because our first car was going pretty fast, but our second car was not going at all. So it's going to slow down, but not quite by half because our mass of our first one was quite a bit larger than the mass of our second one. So here's another one. We have a 25 gram bullet that is fired from a gun with a speed of 230 meters per second. If the gun has a mass of 0.9 kilograms, what is the recoil speed of the gun? So we have, <laughs> we have our gun and our bullet in our gun to start with. So this is kind of the opposite of the one that was up here. We're going to start both of these together. And then in our final, we have our gun that's going to be moving this way a little bit and our bullet, which is going to be going that way a little bit. So we know the mass of our bullet is 0 0.025 kilograms. We know the mass of our gun, we do know the mass of our gun, is 0 0.9 kilograms. The initial velocity of both is zero. But then the final velocity of our bullet is uh, 230 meters per second. Okay. So again, initial momentum is equal to final momentum. In this case, the mass of the gun and the bullet is our initial. And our final is going to be the momentum of the gun plus the momentum of the bullet. So the mass of both of them together times the velocity of both of them together is going to be equal to the mass of the gun times the velocity of the gun plus the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet. Oh, and these are at rest, so this is actually zero. So that's a little bit less calculating. That's nice.
So we're actually going to get, we're trying to find the velocity of the gun. So the recoil speed of the gun, that's when you fire that bullet, a little bit of that kick that comes back from the gun. We're trying to find this right here. So the velocity of the gun is going to be equal to the mass of the bullet times the final velocity of the bullet divided by the mass of the gun. So our bullet has a mass of 0 0.9 kilograms. No, that's our gun. Let's ignore that. Our bullet has a mass of 0 0.025 kilograms. And the velocity of our bullet is 230 meters per second. And the mass of our gun is 0 0.9 kilograms. So if we calculate that out, the recoil speed of our gun is 6.4 meters per second.